And today to take a look at the latest B-Link Mini S12 Pro, which comes with the latest N100 Intel 12th generation CPU. We are going to take a look at performance temperatures, noise levels, and what we can do with this machine right over here. And also some differences between the N100 and the N5105, which is the CPU that this one came to replace. Before we do, this machine has Windows 11 Pro. And if you still haven't activated your license, don't forget to check out KeysFan, where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price. And with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below in the video description, you will get an extra discount. So just in case you want to check that out, I will leave the link down below. Now inside the package, we will find the Billink Mini S12 Pro. We also have a power adapter, a monitor support, just in case we want to put it on the back of our display. Two HDMI cables, which is usually something that I don't mention, but it makes total sense. It has a regular size HDMI and then a very sharp HDMI. So if we want to put it at the back of a display, we have a short cable and it will just connect to the display. So no wires there. It also comes with a manual that usually we don't read. In terms of design, it follows the B-Link design, looks really nice. It has this fiberglass look on the top. Be aware of some things fingerprints which are very easy to clean up but nonetheless be aware in terms of the front we will have two usb 3.2 connections audio out a power on and off button and the clear qmos at the back another two usb 3.2 one gigabit ethernet connection two hdmi outputs that will do 4k at 60 hertz power input and a cassington lock on both sides we'll have these grills that will help to keep the temperature really Really, really cool and at the bottom we'll have some screws which we can just remove and we can open the mini computer now we will have access to three parts that we can upgrade one of which is a 2.5 inch slot that we can put a 2.5 inch ssd or mechanical hard drive with big capacity so that we can transform this into a multimedia center we will also have access to the ram and to the m.2 now the ram also comes with 16 gigabytes which is the maximum so it's not worth it to update and the m.2 comes with 512 gigs and we can update or upgrade up to two terabytes in the future but as for now i do believe that the specifications that this machine has are more than enough to keep it working like this with the exception that probably if i want a multimedia center like a plex server or a mb server or any other multimedia center then probably a big capacity 2.5 inch hard drive would be the best that we could put right over here in terms of numbers really quickly it has wi-fi 6 and i was able to get 217 megabits per second on download and 100 on upload and on the ethernet connection it has a gigabit ethernet so i was getting the maximum of my connection which is 500 megabits per second download and 100 upload on the ssd that comes pre-installed i was getting 840 megabytes per second reads and on writes geekbench with a really nice score of 1100 on single core score and 2900 on multi-core score cinebench with 730 on single core and multi core score with 2800 more or less and 3d mark time spy with 374 so all great scores with the exception of 3d mark which is the gaming benchmark and this is the limitation of this kind of device now we have seen one of the previous billing machines with the i5 it has a superior integrated graphics so we were able to get better performance out of it but this one is designed for the multimedia experience and we can also play some games now i did test out with overwatch 2 and it's a game that i do enjoy testing out on machines because we can scale it up from the lowest settings to the highest and any machine will be able to play it but we will have to sacrifice graphics so i was able to play or started to play with high at 1080 but i was not getting more than 15 frames per second so i did reduce to medium play around with low medium low medium and i was getting on medium a balance of 30 to 50 frames per second so totally playable 
but we had some stops, some freeze, some crashes. Well, not crashes, but some drop frames that would go low to 15 or 10, which makes that not so good experience. So I would suggest that we to have a better gaming experience lower even more to the low settings so that we are able to play Overwatch 2 or any other game that has the same level of graphics. And this to say that for those that will ask, hey Robert, can I play this game or that game? Overwatch 2 will be a guideline. And if you have to play on low settings, then high demanding games is not the target for this machine. If you ask me if you can play Asphalt 8, yes, and all those kinds of games, which are console games, Android and Windows platform, then you have a lot of fun right over here. If you want to build up a retro gaming console, we did one and I will leave a link right over here on the YouTube card with this CPU. I was really curious and the experience was awesome. So this kind of scenario is totally possible and if of course we want to build a multimedia streaming device this is great to put on our living room we will have access to everything that windows has plus the black server or home assistant or mb or anything that we want and of course home assistant is for our smart home but this is something that i usually install as you guys know on the side so that we have more possibilities on our windows machine now before we wrap up i did some tests in terms of performance and noise i did put in prime 95 and stress the four cores to the maximum through half an hour and the result was really interesting maximum temperature was about 95 to 96 degrees celsius and a really low noise the software was telling us that the fans were at 2800 rpm but they are very silent we will hear something but nothing special special and it's cooling down this machine while it was on with four cores at maximum keeping up on the 2.3 2.5 gigahertz as minimum on all the cores so this was really awesome now one of the other tests that i did was once we finish up the 100 percent stress test it was able to cool down itself really quickly. In a matter of minutes, it did go down to 70 degrees Celsius and a few minutes more, it was on the 40s. So really cool, really efficient. The CPU and also the cooling system that Billink put together right over here impressed me because we can put this on our bedroom, on our living room, and we will not be annoyed with sometimes machines that create a lot of noise in this particular case no really really quiet finally some differences between the n100 which is in this machine and the older n5105 cpu which this one came to replace first of all it's interesting to see that the new alder lake 12th generation is getting the minimum clock lower so 0 0.8 gigahertz which means that when it's in idle it will spend less electricity it will be a lot more friendly although every single machine like this already spends less but they did a great job now on the other side it will ramp up to 3.4 gigahertz if we compare with the n5105 we had as minimum 2 gigahertz and as maximum 2.9 so this one right over here has a wider range on the tdp this one will go up to 25 watts while the older N5105 only did 15 watts and if you are on the market for a machine such as this one pay attention to the specifications because if you find a machine with the N5105 for example unless it has a great discount half of the price something like that then probably it's worth it but if the price is more or less the same then go for this one right over here because you will get a lot more performance as we saw you will have a better machine at an affordable price that being said hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did so don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen my name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you guys on the next one